that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review charged by BoardGameExchange.com, and it's only Board Gamer on a website. And today, I'm very excited to be checking out Seeker's Treasure Hunt, currently on a Kickstarter near you. Seeker's Treasure Hunt is for two to four players, ages 12 and up, it'll take about 30 minutes to play. And in Seeker's Treasure Hunt, you will be exploring through the desert, taking two characters, finding little treasure, little treasure, and going on these little eye things and trying to find out where the big elusive treasure is. But only one person can find it. You're going to be racing around the desert trying to find the big treasure. Sound intriguing? Let's open up the sale, please. Alright, so let's take a look at what you're going to get inside of Seeker's Treasure Hunt. As I always like to mention, this is a promotional copy of the game. Even though it does look very, very nice, it is a promotional copy, so your rule booklet probably isn't going to just be three typed up pages. But, let's go over uh, what you're going to get and how the game plays real quick. First and foremost, you're going to get your handy dandy rule booklet. This one is five pages, full color, double sided. And he told me he's going to stretch it out a little bit, put two additional pages on there to help clarify some things, and uh, just do a little bit of overhaul on the rules. But I'm sure he will just make them better because these rule booklet isn't that bad in the first place. Uh, pretty simple to learn. It's a very simple game. Uh, next, you're going to get your board, which is really, really cool looking. It's a nice little grid showing like this burnt kind of treasure map in the desert. Uh, with different symbols on them. The first symbols you're going to see are, are treasure chests. They're all around. You go to these, you're going to get treasure cards, which you get to in a minute. Uh, and the main one here are going to be these eye symbols down here. When you get to an eye symbol, you're going to be able to look at a card, which is going to help you find the, vague, the big elusive treasure. Because in this game, what you're going to be doing is going around the desert, going to all four of these eyes, so you can figure out where the big buried treasure is. And whoever gets to the big buried treasure first is the winner of the game. Uh, so there's the board. Next you're going to get your character cards, and right now they have no characters on them because these are going to be uh, Kickstarter people, which is always cool. And each one is going to have their own unique special item, which will let them do various different things. Go diagonal, have extra cards, go a certain number of spaces more. Uh, uh, very cool different things in there. And you're going to have two of these cards. Each player is going to get two of these cards. So we'll just put, uh, we'll do a mock two-player hand so you can see exactly how it works. So two cards over there, two cards over there, discard the rest. Uh, next you're going to have what are treasure cards. Now when you get to the various different treasure chests around the board, you're going to be able to draw a treasure card, put it in your hand, and they, some of them are incredibly useful. And they have various different abilities on them. Some will let you move, like one that I really like will let you move to any eye, so you can just move one of your characters immediately to any eye. I mean, there's this one, uh, look at any... Um, you can look at an eye that another player has already visited. So essentially, like, if you start over here and this guy starts over here and he's looked at this, you can just say, oh, I'm going to look at that one. Uh, so it's very, very useful. You want to get to the treasure ones. But the thing is, uh, once you go to a treasure, you can no longer go there. So it's kind of a race to get to some of the treasure points, especially in a four-player game, which is one thing I definitely liked about it. Uh, getting ahead of myself though. Uh, next you're going to get the playing cards and these are the cards you're mostly going to have in your hand. And these have various different things on them. There's counters and quicksands and mirages and fool's gold and a mobility which will let you move one additional space. They're going to have a lot of various different abilities that you're going to want to save and use at certain points in the game. There's a little bit of card management in this game. Uh, so, oh, last thing I forgot to mention is you're going to get the eye cards. What happens is uh, there's only going to be four per game, but there's going to be a bunch of different sets of eye cards. So each game, there'll be, you know, the treasure will be in a different spot. It's not going to be like, oh, the treasure's here, and the next game it's here, and here, and here. It's in the same spot, which I like the fact they did that. And they actually have enough here that, you know, unless you're playing this game like four or five times a day, you're not going to remember where the treasure is, which is cool. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to have your set A, and you're going to set these out. And on these cards, there's gonna, it's going to be a little bit confusing when you're first looking at it. But essentially what this means is these are the spots uh, right here are where the treasure is. Uh, and there's going to be spots where the treasure is not. And you're going to be uh, going through, finding all four, and you'll be like, oh, so I can see it's not here or here, so it has to be in this line. And then you can see. Uh, but you're going to eventually look at all four of the eyes and figure out exactly where the treasure is on this huge grid. Uh, so once 
uh, once you go to an I, like this one has one and two and three and four, you'll flip over that corresponding number and you'll be able to look at this throughout the rest of the game. Now, I don't have one in my version, but you're also going to have a little card in front of you where you can mark out exactly which spots it could or could not be. So that's pretty cool in, as well. So we got our four I cards over here we're going to have to set up. Last but not least, you're going to have your pawns. Now, I'm assuming these aren't going to be the pawns that you're going to get in your game. Uh, this is a promotional copy of the game. And these are going to be used for your characters because you're going to be able to get two characters. Now, how this works is you're going to pick two colors. So we'll have orange for this guy and yellow. So if we get his orange and his yellow, and this guy will be blue, and he will be white, and then we put the rest off of the board. And how you do this is you're going to put one on your character card so you can remember that that yellow one has that ability because you have two special abilities but your pawn only has his certain special ability so that's kind of a neat thing next you're going to figure out which side of the board you want to start at so this guy is going to start down here and they got these marked off squares this guy will start over here and you're going to get three of these cards so one two three one two three and then you are ready to start the game now, some of the cards are going to have you uh, essentially uh, flipping a coin, which they what they used to do, but now it's going to be rolling a dice to do something at the end of the turn. One of my favorite cards is actually the skull, and this is this is a high risk, high reward kind of card, uh, where essentially you have a 50/50 shot of either A not moving or B moving three spaces, which in this game is a lot of spaces. But normally during your turn, you're going to be able to move each of your characters one space, some will let you move diagonal if you have a certain ability, and then you are going to play any of the cards in your hand that you want. I also forgot to mention, at the beginning of your turn, you're going to draw an additional card. So I move those two, I'll look at my hand and see what I got, and say, oh, let's see, I can do this mobility right here, which is awesome. That will let me move each one of my guys one additional space, and he'll go here, and he'll go here, because he's headed toward the treasure, and he's headed toward the treasure, because the treasure is really nice. Now, <clears throat> then I'm going to discard down to three cards in my hand. Luckily, I already have three, so I'm good. And you also only can have two treasure cards in your hand, which isn't a problem I really ran into, because once you get the treasure cards, most of the time you're going to want to spend them. And then your turn's over. I mean, that's how simple the turn is. So next, this guy, it's his turn. He's going to draw a card first. Boom. He's going to move his two characters, and he'll go right here, and he'll go right there. And then he's going to see if any of his cards he wants to use, and he will use... Uh, no, he'll hold on to one. Uh, hold on to his cards, but then since he's got four, he's going to have to discard this. And next, uh, this guy would go, and you'd go back and forth and back and forth, and eventually you'd find different treasures. And So this one says, back in time, counter target player's treasure chest card. Uh, so essentially, if someone does something with a treasure chest, you can say, oh, nope, you didn't do that. So that kind of sucks for that person. And you're going to go around the board until you've seen all four eyes, and then it becomes a mad dash to get to whatever spot the treasure is at, and whoever gets to that treasure spot and digs up the treasure first is the winner of Seeker's Treasure Hunt. And that, in a nutshell, is how Seeker's Treasure Hunt is played. Alrighty then, Seeker's Treasure Hunt. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. First and foremost, it's a very light family game, which is not going to be for everybody. It's only two to four players. Can't play by yourself, can't play with more than four players. Which So you've got a big game group, probably not going to be up your alley. Also, uh, I didn't really like how the iCars work sometimes. They can be confusing because teeny tiny little numbers on there, and also because... If you have it at the wrong angle, you're like, oh wait, is it this way, or is it that way, or do the lines mean that you can't have it, or you can't have it? And sometimes it just got a tad bit confusing. Uh, the last thing I didn't like was that there is a good deal of luck in this game. You're going to be rolling dice to see what happens a lot of the time. And also, some of the cards are, uh, they seem to be a lot better than other cards. And if you draw the good ones, then obviously you will have a much better chance of winning. Uh, moving on to the pros, though. I definitely did enjoy my time with Seeker's Treasure Hunt. It scratches a light family game itch. If you got, you know, one or two kids, this is a game that I could really see them getting into. First and foremost, because the theme, uh, it, it's a really cool theme. Uh, and the map, and all the components really help draw you into it. The map, or not the map, but the board, which is a map, really gets you into it. The board is really, really cool. It looks like this old-timey treasure map. You really feel like you're exploring throughout the desert. 
you know, getting to these minor treasure chests that will help you, and then getting to the big treasure chest, and then you can get, like, especially if two people get the, the eyes at the same time, and they're like, now it's just a race to go to that final spot where you know both know the treasure chest is. It can be quite a bit of fun. Uh, what else do I like? I also uh, really did enjoy the fact that this is a very easy game to teach and to learn. Uh, it is boom, 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 boom. It's just, oh, draw a card, then do this, and do that, and then it's your turn. And, and it is. It's incredibly quick and easy to teach and to learn, which is always a plus with a light family game. Overall, Seeker's Treasure Hunt, if you're looking for a light family game, it's definitely a game that I'd recommend you check out on the link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time. That was the review for Seeker's Treasure Hunt. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Also, be sure to check out BoardGameExchange.com. It's cooler than being an adult.